whole party hat. The whole go bang bang here. Let us begin. I want you to keep an eye out for the Boogity Man. Hey everybody and welcome to the VHS Bandits Podcast. On today's episode we go back to the 90s. As a kid, we're watching a 90s kids movie! Today we are watching the one and only Dunstan Checks In. Let's pop in the tape! The world's most debonair hero... Where the action is. His name is Dunstan. He's conducting covert operations, romancing Ooh. irresistible women. Oh, that's just how I like it. And facing unimaginable danger. Dunstan checks in. Yes. Oh, more. I like it rough. Oh. <laughs> and now. Our feature presentation. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the VHS Bandits podcast. I am Dane Train, and with me, as always, is my co host, Topher Hansen. And we got a very special guest today. Uh, we have been on this gentleman's podcast, and we've invited him over here. Uh, this is Ryan Buds of Trivia with Buds and TriviaWithBuds.com. Tri- uh, Ryan, what's up, buddy? What's up, Dane Train? What's up, Topher? How are you guys today? Well, very well <laughs> doing swell it's a nice hot summer day and uh nothing like a hot summer day than a nice 90s kids movie to with 90s which is also the temperature right now so it's perfect not here in beautiful california where it it's always 75 where <laughs> me and ryan are at nice and hot and humid over here in central massachusetts it was Sounds so nice terrible. today i felt bad sitting inside uh and watching this movie Oh man, <laughs> you don't want to be outside over here right now. You, it's you got to be in the air conditioning. That's the only way to do it. As long so. as there's no chimpanzees on the loose in your backyard to jump on your <laughs> Throwing back, coconuts at you. Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> you really so, got to look out for. I was just more scared of Paul Rubens creeping around with a gun in my back. Oh my <laughs> god! Yeah. <laughs> so uh, of all people. Oh man. So uh so so right. So uh a couple of months ago we were on your show and we did trivia on VHS tapes and uh we did it was uh eighty sex comedies and nineties kids movies and T Man perfect won. combo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Perfect combo and you guys had some good competition and uh, I think we had some fun with those questions. Yeah, yeah. yeah so- that was so much fun. Yeah, I Ryan, had a blast. why don't you tell us tell us a little bit about uh, your podcast first of all, and um, you know what you do uh, as far as trivia goes. Yeah, no problem. So I host full time. That's my full time job. I host trivia events in Southern California at a bunch of different bars and breweries on a weekly basis. I think I have twelve or thirteen places right now. So um, if I can't be there on any given night, I have another comedian hosting in my place. And then I also do a lot of special events for different companies like Netflix or YouTube or Fandango uh, that want to do like a company picnic or some sort of competition in the office, team building type stuff. And I really kind of stumbled into it in the last couple of years. I was, I was doing it as a side, side business, side hustle kind of a thing for uh, the last five years or so. And then in the last six to nine months, it's turned into my, my full-fledged business. So it's a really fun job for me as somebody who loves pop culture and stuff like VHS tapes to, uh, you know, go ask people questions and then give them tapes as prizes in some cases. Oh, yeah, your, your Patreons get VHS tapes as one of the rewards. Is that correct? That is correct. In addition to the uh, live shows that I do, I put out a now daily podcast. It used to be once a week, then it was twice a week. And then um, on June 26, I decided to go every day, go all in on the podcast. Wow. So it comes out, yeah, it comes out every day Ooh. and it's a little dose of trivia. Sometimes I still have guests like you guys battling or something like that, or I might just be asking 
uh, you know, 25 questions about America for the 4th of July episode coming up in a couple <laughs> cool. days. Awesome. So, yeah, it's 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 a it makes it a little bit more flexible for me to not always worry about having a guest and still providing some uh, trivia for people to answer. I get a lot of emails from people who are like, hey, me and my wife play this on road trips and we battle and it's tons of fun. And they'll send me like their score sheet. And that lets oh, me know that awesome. so like cool. what I'm doing <laughs> is is resonating with people who like trivia. So that's really cool. And um, if you uh, wanted to support my show, uh, you can go to patreon.com slash trivia with buds, uh, like you mentioned, Topher. And I do send stuff uh, a lot of nostalgic stuff, so stuff like maybe a Roadhouse pin set that I made Ooh. of uh, Patrick Swayze and the, the villain in that, <laughs> or a uh, a random VHS tape. I'm staring at a stack right now. I went on a spree. Usually when I buy some at a thrift store, I'll send them to Topher, and uh, I got, yes. let's see, what's going on you over there? You and me got... went VHS shopping one day. I appreciate <laughs> that. You showed me some good uh, some good places to find VHS and, and Yeah. The we went out to Frankenstein's. We went to a, a Hollywood video that's still open, which is called, like, uh, California Video or something yeah. like that. Oh, no yeah. way. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I'm, I'm staring at a stack right now. I have, uh, let's see, a Ninja Turtles Attack of the Pizzas cartoon VHS tape. Oh, yeah. I have yeah. that one. Yeah. Except I traded that back in high school for oh. my I traded Mother Goose Rock and Rhyme for that tape and I never got my Mother Goose Rock and Rhyme big back. Mistake. Wow. Big I mistake. Had that, I had that growing up. Wasn't that was that an Avon video that like you, your mom had to buy from Avon? Oh, I don't know. Oh wait, there was is, a, wait, is, is, is it, I mean you mean Mother Goose Rock and Rhyme? Yeah, is that oh, what it was? I, I think I don't know if it was Disney. It used to play it on Disney. I have an I, actual like retail copy of it. Um I there was a series of videos. My mom, she used to sell Avon, and she would order me videos out of the Avon magazines, and it was oh, like, wild. I think there was an Encyclopedia Brown mystery series, Ooh. like a live action, and I think there was a Mother Goose something or other, but oh. uh, some, some of the- Encyclopedia, the movie. How yeah. exciting. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Some of the other tapes in my pile are uh, Crocodile Dundee 2, Boy in the Plastic Bubble with John Travolta. Oh, yeah. Uh, you sent me a picture oh, of these. Oh, man. I, I, got some, I got some really good ones. <laughs> oh, man. Good stuff. Awesome stuff. Oh, good finds, dude. Um, yeah. So, Exciting to find those. They're all 50 cents, too. Yeah, that's the way to go, man. Yeah. See, that's, a, that's a, when you can get that stuff for cheap, there's, there's nothing better. You know what I mean? It's a so. great it's a great surge that goes through me. So before we dive, before we check in to Dunstan Checks In, uh, we want to <laughs> give a quick, quick shout out to our good friend from up north in good old Canada, uh, Corey Gorski. Corey Gorski. Uh, if, as you guys just heard at the beginning of our podcast, our brand new, brand spanking new theme song that Corey emailed us yesterday, and we love it. It's awesome. Holy shit, is this song rad. It's unbelievably awesome. So uh, we're going to have it at the head of all of our new episodes from now going. So, Corey, thank you so much, buddy. We love it. You're awesome. And um, maybe we'll get you on an episode soon. Yeah, thank That'd you so much, man. And Corey, obviously a musician, so he's got some uh, projects coming up later on that we will keep you updated about because they're going to be fucking dope. That's right. You got it. All right, you guys ready to enter? Check in. Check in to, the, to Jason Alexander's hotel? All right, <laughs> let me say, before we start... We've got to put this to rest, Dane Train. Oh, God. oh, here we go. I we knew this was going to come put, up. We got to listen. Hey, hey, Dane Train. All right. All right. So we here's, mentioned. Here's another crazy hey, story, boys hey, and hey, ghouls. Hey, hey, <laughs> I'm checking like, in here. You, I'm you checking got, in here. All right. Real quick, real quick. You guys remember last summer when we talked about the worst summer ever down the Cape? Me and T-Man. This is my worst summer ever. This is going to be. Another worst summer ever story. <laughs> so here you go. We've mentioned it a few times yeah. here on the VHS Bandits. And we mentioned it on our episode with um, Trivia with Buds. But this is the last time you're ever going to hear the Dunstan Checks In story. We're because we're rest. burying the banana tonight. <laughs> Back in 1996 when Dunstan Checks In came out in theaters... Me and Dane Train were in elementary school, and we were supposed to see this movie together at White City Cinemas. And Shrewsbury, I was, Massachusetts. I was so looking forward to it. There was joy in my heart, joy in my eyes. And 
Alas, my parents were divorced. Woe is me. So, one weekend I was with my, my father and I was not in the White City area. So, what happened behind my back while I was gone? <laughs> Dane Train went and saw Dunstan Jackson with someone else. <laughs> and my little toper heart was broken. And the wound has never healed until until today where I got to watch Dustin checks in with my best pal Dane Train. So Dane, I've never said it before, <laughs> but I forgive you. <laughs> Let's check in. It's, it's true. It's true. This is, you never forgave me for that. Hey. D <laughs> what did you D say? Did you say I, I went with a girl? No, I didn't say that because I didn't want to embarrass you further that you went to Dunstan checks in with a oh. girl who has cooties. <laughs> it's true. She had cooties. <laughs> she probably did. actually. Oh, God. Ah, uh, yeah, so that's it, boys and ghouls. We're, we're putting it to rest today with Ryan. That's it. Dane, you're a real son of a bitch. Oh, right? what can I say? That's what I've been saying for years. But, hey, <laughs> alas, the banana is buried. Yeah, let's, let's banana the, let's, let's, <laughs> let's, let's banana put, this. Let's put the banana peel down on the, let's, let's be like Super Mario in his cart and throw the banana peel behind him. <laughs> that's right. So, <laughs> anywho, that's the... So that's the tragic story of Dunstan checks in as we here we are to do a uh uh, uh I uh, what you know uh, we're we're getting back to it for the first time ever. So so I only saw this movie one time in the movie theater. Ever. I never saw this and movie. You, you've never seen it until I now. I've refused to see this movie until today. I've actually never seen it either. I watched it today for the first time just a few hours ago with my daughter who loved it. <laughs> <laughs> oh really? Oh, that's three, great to hear. Three and a, yeah, three and a half years old, and she was just like, "This monkey is crazy." <laughs> that's I awesome. re legit. This is the best monkey acting I have ever seen. Yeah, it's pretty good for a '90s movie. Uh, I'd say it's better than most things you see with a monkey in it. Yeah. That is a very good way to put <laughs> to put it. <laughs> when you, yeah. I mean, I mean, let's think about it. They there were a lot of monkey movies that came out. There was Spy Mate. Um, what I know, Ed, I just, Ed with uh, Matt LeBlanc. Uh, yeah, Ed. Yeah, was, yeah, the baseball movie. There were uh, yeah, Congo. Might, I don't know. There Mighty were a whole Joe lot of Young. movies. Yeah, yeah. The Mighty Joe. Yup, yeah, right. Um, there were a whole lot of monkey movies that came out in this time. So and let me let me just. Oh, sorry. No, Do go on. Why don't you talk about the box. business to get through? Yeah, yeah. We forgot about the box. So Dunstan checks in. I've got this in a puppy case. I thought it was a Disney movie, but it's actually a 20, uh, 20th Century Fox movie. Uh, so the cover, it's got this little kid in super 90s clothes. He looks like he's right out of Nirvana. And the monkey, Dunstan, is hugging him, wearing underpants that are not in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so let's read the back. What is Dunstan checks in about? You've been asking. Well, let me tell you a five star hotel turns into a three ring circus when an out. Oh, orangutan. Orangutan is spelled with an O, by the way. That threw me off. <laughs> when an oh, orangutan, orangutan named Dunstan checks in. Jason Alexander from Seinfeld, Faye Dunaway from Network, and Eric Lloyd from The Santa Claus star in this hilarious romp about an orangutan who gets loose in the elegant, majestic hotel on the eve of the social event of the season. Dodging the jewel-thieving owner and the frantic hotel manager, Dunstan is befriended by the manager's 10-year-old son, Kyle, who is determined to help, uh, who is determined to help his new friend escape. Filled with laughter and comic hijinks, Dunstan checks in, all in capitals, is a steady stream of giggles for those who get a kick out of monkey business. 1995, color 88 minutes. All that's right. A beautifully written, that's beautifully written. Right? <laughs> that's really well done. It, it's, uh, yeah. It tells you a lot. And this kid, it mentions Eric Lloyd, who played the kid. He's... The older kid, the older brother. I, I mentioned to Dane Tran. I feel like he's doing a uh, 
Christian Slater impression. Uh, yeah, doing yeah. doing a, his Jack Nicholson impression. He's basically Christian Slater from Heather's, but with a monkey now. Yeah. I feel like the director pulled that actor aside and he goes, kid, you don't care about the monkey. You're thinking with your dick. <laughs> <laughs> the whole movie, no matter what happens, all you're looking for is tail. <laughs> That's very yeah, right. true. He's, he's definitely the titty brigade of this movie. <laughs> he, he like makes one of the security guards like zoom in on these like French girls sunbathing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's- and the dad, the dad even says he's like, uh, enough of your voyeuristic whatever. Yeah, like, right. Yeah, this, is, this may be a, a crime. Yeah, he knows his kids <laughs> are total using Tom. <laughs> yeah. Using hotel property to spy on women. <laughs> I also love that uh, the older brother and jo- um, Jason Alexander have thick New York accents, and the young kid is clearly from, like, Los Angeles. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not even a tinge. <laughs> And Jason Alexander has some hair in this. There's a he lovely does. hair it's piece. It's totally got to be a wig. It has to be. Yeah, they just threw that on there. When you look at the vintage commercial of Jason Alexander singing and dancing in the late 80s, hawking the McDonald's like BLT, Mick, Mick BLT, <laughs> he's already got less hair in that than he does in this movie 1996. I kept waiting for him to just go full Costanza because when he yells in this movie, he, he he goes into the George Costanza character. Oh, which totally. Was, yeah, yeah. Which was great. And I'm like, I, I want him to be like, George is getting upset. And they're like, yeah, what'd you right. say? And he's like, nothing. You know? <laughs> he did have a couple moments. There was when the monkey, uh, I guess, well, should we talk about that now or save it? I Why don't we go through the movie a little bit and then we'll, all we'll right, start getting all right. some we'll things. All right, all right. We'll save yeah. that. So how does it start off? So uh, so we got the, the, the Majestic Hotel. Jason Alexander is like the head manager. He's got his two kids. They live in there. And the kids are always trying to like put little tricks on the people who work in there. So like there's a there's like a water fountain that's in the uh, that's in like the main lobby. And they turn the valve to turn it off. So it stops like like puking puking water into the fountain. And one of the managers is like, oh, what's going on? And. Otho from Beetlejuice is over. He's like trying to check into the hotel while some other lady shows up and she's like an opera singer. And what happens? They break the valve off of the water. So the water's shooting straight in like a 90 degree, I mean, in a 45 degree angle, bam, like right down. And uh, it's it's hitting Otho in the face and this and this lady and the, the dog's going everywhere. This guy's got a dog and that's going everywhere. And the lady's hopping into the water. Poor Otho. He almost gets he almost gets murdered in this movie several times. That's Everybody true. almost gets murdered several times in this movie. <laughs> Especially Otho. Everybody's falling and the, through Dunstan, ducks. Dunstan, this movie is about trying to murder a chimp. Yeah, that you keep in a case with no <laughs> air holes. Yeah. And Dunstan, like, attacks a lot of people in this movie. Sure. Like, he, he should full-on attacks down. them. Um, so, uh, Jason Alexander's had a lot of the... He's kind of had it with the kids' hijinks. So he's trying to, like, put them on lockdown because there's some lady who owns the hotel. Uh, what the hell her name? her name was, like, The Brown. Is that right? Something like that. The Brown. We'll call it The Brown. The and, Brown. Uh, she shows up to kind of check on things that they don't want it to be a five-star hotel anymore. It's going to be a six-star hotel. The newest and craziest craze in high-end hotels. <laughs> and there's an <laughs> undercover hotel reviewer or some bullshit who has the authority to make that happen who ends and up being Otho spoilers yeah, spo- spoilers, spoilers. It's o- it's Otho. <laughs> so um so this this there's this total creepazoid who shows up named like Lord Buckkiss or what the hell was his name I don't know. He looks like the guy from the Wild Thornberries. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord, like a uh, human version of that dad. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Lord, Lord, uh, Lord Upridge. Yeah, Lord, Lord Butthole, but but something. Buttridge. We're gonna call him Lord Buttridge. Um, Buttridge. So he shows up and he's got like this big case that looks like Andre Toulon's from Puppet Master, and um, he's being a total dink to everybody. And uh, come to find out, he's got this. Oh, not an orangutan, but an orangutan <laughs> that he locks up in this um in this puppet master case, and I guess he's like a he's like a thief, and he uses the monkey 
to get jewels and stuff at uh, various hotels. He's like, we're going to go steal this whole, uh, we're going to steal this hotel right underneath them. Yeah, he's the, and we never, he does steal the jewels, but we never find out what happens to them. They're just like, he just leaves them in his little monkey nest in the basement. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. They yeah, never yeah. recover the stolen jewelry. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I thought it was very strange. So th- this uh, this villain, he has this plan where he has this monkey in a case, and the monkey's in his room, and they share this hotel room. So the villain dresses up like a um, uh, bellboy, which yes. – this seems like a very tight knit group of workers. They all know the kids. They, there's only like, you know, a, a, a few dozen of them. Everybody right. knows everybody. This guy sneaks in as a bellboy. He hangs a uh, ribbon on the window so that the monkey knows to climb outside the window uh, and which window to go in, right? So then the monkey steals the jewels later in the movie. And I'm like, when he was the bellboy and he breaks in the room to put the ribbon, couldn't he have just taken what he wanted and left? Right. Why well, you yeah, need the monkey what the at all? Fuck? Oh, wait, yeah, well, I didn't even think of that. That's so dumb. Well, yeah, because I mean, it's kind of weird to say because hole. you know how there's like cameras everywhere and they review the footage. Um, yeah. Obviously, if he went in and stole the jewels, they would know that it was him. So maybe he put the costume on to say, oh, he's just a bellboy. I don't know. It's but weird. Still, I guess, he could have yeah. he could have walked out with like a maid cart with like one of those laundry carts yeah and just throw yeah. every fucking thing oh my you you're a much better thief than this guy ryan <laughs> the movie would have <laughs> been over right you, then and there yeah if you went through all the trouble to match the bellboy costume and go into that room unsuspected you're like i'll just hang a ribbon and add another layer of monkey to this <laughs> yeah right it's <laughs> like very silly Oh man, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> I'm I'm just as dumb as Lord Buttridge. <laughs> <laughs> that may oh, have been man. his uh, his legal name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> End of movie. So, so I uh, here's some here's some quick bullet points I made too about some other dumb stuff. Bullet it um, up. Please. I just think it's crazy, like that people get mail at hotels and so much mail they have a whole cubby hole of like they're, they're throwing mail in this thing like it's a mail room in an office. And I'm like, you're, these your guests to the hotel. How many letters are they getting for the days that they're there? That's very true. Yeah. I didn't. I mean, I know hotels have mail. I just thought that was cra- the amount of letters they were throwing in. I mean, um, it is a five star, nearly six star hotel. So the guests just don't want to leave. A lot of telegrams. A lot of telegrams. Okay, so and this uh, is, you know, the internet was still in its infancy, so it's still snail mail, I suppose. Judging oh, from yeah. the laptops that they used, <laughs> yes. Oh, everyone, yeah. every Those single person. Those laptops <laughs> were made of cement and just, like, uh, <laughs> glue. They were crazy. Everyone has access to the software that runs the entire hotel. The kids do. Lord Buttwad does. <laughs> and yep. Jason Alexander is probably the only person that doesn't have access <laughs> to the command center <laughs> software of the hotel also i love that you can search whatever software that is for items ordered from room service yeah right. later in the movie <laughs> they like he types in banana pudding. and he sees all the banana dishes ordered to the one room where the monkey's hiding and he's like bingo <laughs> <laughs> Like it makes, it may, like what is he like? Like a master? Is he like a? Is he a a, a DOS computer yeah, hacker? I mean, what? Why, another, uh, what? If he's so good at like being a a digital criminal, why doesn't he <laughs> hack into people's bank accounts and shit? Or you know? Oh like, yeah, I don't. I don't know if it's so much as hacking as much as opening a program called the Majestic and <laughs> typing in like anything you want to know. We're There's in. no security. There's no passwords. It's just like this is the hotel computer. All right, yeah. what 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 game you want me to plug in now on this floppy disk? You want me to put an Oregon Trail? You want me to put a Majestic Hotel? <laughs> in in the beginning, the kid was playing solitaire. He's like, and then Jason Alexander like closes the laptop. He's like, Dad, I was up to four hundred fifty bucks. <laughs> Should have been. Playing. Uh, yeah, what is that? I love that gambling solitaire back in ninety uh, six. Yeah. Should, should when is this movie from? This is ninety six. Ninety six. Ninety six. I was eleven. How old were you guys? Uh, I was 10. A, yeah, a 10, so we were, 11? We were yeah, all we're about the same, the same age. age as this kid. Sure. Uh, this kid, I love at the beginning, like, again, you could just tell executives are like, put them on rollerblades. Like, for no reason, they're rollerblading <laughs> <laughs> through the kitchen and things like that. That was a big They're like, monkeys and rollerblades. That's what kids, kids like. like rollerblades. <laughs> That's hot right now. I like uh, how, like, the older brother, like, was 
covered to to the brim with like a helmet and elbow pads and knee pads and everything. Anytime he had any of his like gear, you know, his his rollerblades on, I'm like, would a kid it, riding around a hotel have all that stuff? Well, he needs it later to brace his fall from 30 stories through an <laughs> elevator shaft. <laughs> That's true. Or a, a, a laundry chute. Even though, yeah, a laundry chute that goes all the way up to the attic of an industrial broken down warehouse. Yeah. <laughs> a lot so of kids, the, the, the kid and the monkey fall down face first like a missile. Yeah. 30 plus <laughs> stories into us yeah. into a small pile of clothes completely unfazed totally unharmed <laughs> and the other kid needed the helmet and everything to to break his fall but no as long as his dick was okay he was fine that of character of course oh yeah yeah i'm sure he was wearing a cup <laughs> <laughs> i love the very o- one of the opening lines the first jokes of the movie is just fat shaming an opera singer he's like she's a thousand pounds <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Dunstan checks his privilege. <laughs> <laughs> and also, uh, at the be- yeah. speaking of ridiculous falls, I mean, the <laughs> physics in this movie, you shouldn't expect them to be correct, but um, the in the beginning when the kid, uh, Kyle, is that the little kid? I don't know. Whatever. The fucking little kid. Um, when he first meets Dunstan, he's walking Otho's dog on oh, yeah. the roof of this, like, 30 story hotel. It's probably 100 and, stories for all you know. Yeah, and that's when Dunstan is climbing the climbing the building to steal the the jewelry and shit from the window. And Dunstan is at the top of the he's like scaling the hotel, he's going up to the roof and the dog like smells the monkey and like jumps off of the roof. 30 stories and doesn't die because it lands in a trash can. Yeah, they, they did not care about their like Anybody could fall from anything. Just put a little basket of garbage or clothes. They'll be fine. Like a what? New York City garbage can is <laughs> probably filled with syringes. <laughs> yeah, right. Somebody Broken sleeping in there. Surprisingly, it's yeah. not on fire, you know. Yeah, the homeless guy <laughs> broke his fall. Well, like... <laughs> Like, there were so many moments in this movie where I was, like, in shock. I was like, because, <gasps> like, the dog <laughs> right? books it to the roof. I mean, to the edge of the roof. It fucking leaps. And I was and expecting, in my head, I'm thinking, okay, Dunstan is Dunstan. going to check. Dunstan's going to catch this dog, <laughs> and that's how they're going to meet the kid, right? No. Dunstan just doesn't even do anything. Whoosh. The dog just goes down. You see it go through the window, through Otho's window. Boom. And I'm like, holy fuck, is the dog dead? <laughs> like, what the fuck? Oh, yeah. I thought that dog was definitely... I thought I was going to hear... Oh, yeah. He was a goner. You know? a little... <laughs> they, they, they gave it a little... Like a, like a oh like falling God. down noise. And I'm like... Oh. And then it was like a splat. And I'm oh, like, oh, he's oh definitely dead. Oh, my God. Yeah. Like, yeah, there were so many instances where where uh, people and animals love fall and they don't die. <laughs> if, like, the little kid go, You know, he brings the dog back to Otho and he's covered in garbage. Can you imagine the little kid just bring a limp body of this dead dog to Otho? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, like, pile of, pile of furry mush. Just, like, dragging him on a leash as he doesn't move. <laughs> like the corpse of Neil Armstrong. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, let's talk real quick about the the woman who owns the hotel. This was a fun line I wrote down. Uh, she, Jason Alexander says, you got to get out of here. She doesn't like kids. She once kicked Big Bird in the nuts. <laughs> yeah, what the <laughs> hell does that even mean? <laughs> yeah, I was like, what is, why? So she's like, I hate kids, and she has to attack the puppet? Like, it was yeah, such yeah, a weird. The adult in the, in the suit? <laughs> Big yeah, Bird's yeah. an adult. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's a, because she would, I mean, you probably should go get some sort of assault charge if you're kicking big bird in the nuts but if you kick a little kid in the nuts you're definitely <laughs> that's you're not walking away from that yeah. unscathed and i would love if he goes yeah she hates kids she killed two kids <laughs> you're like whoa whoa well, at that point jason alexander like literally grabbed this kid off the ground and it looked like he was about to toss him yeah, right I out thought, the window i thought he was going out the window with the fucking dog too <laughs> it looked he like grabs it, him it, by his collar and by like his pants like it, he's it, using him as a uh with those it, fucking it, it things you knock like, down doors uh, with. It looked like the guy in UHF when he was throwing the puppies out the window. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, he had a he had to put them under the desk because they had to have this great scene from some creepy writer where the kid looks up her skirt a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. a lot of upskirts. <laughs> he in definitely this. he kind of does an upskirt. And yeah, he kind of like does. she sits on the desk and they show him kind of looking up and doing a little eyebrow like. Oh. <laughs> yeah. 
Old I lady just, Vag. Gross. All right. this, and then Dunstan I'm getting crusties in my eyes. Movie. Yeah. <laughs> to like numerous women. I liked uh, Jason Alexander in that uh, same scene right after that where he had a fire Consuelo. And, oh, yeah. And he goes, I have a system. It was a good save the cat moment where he fires them, but he, he, she, he says that she never remembers who he fires, so he just puts them on vacation for a week. Yeah, but he's like, here's $100. Now go cry running out of this yeah. office. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Quite the system. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, Basically, uh, they steal. Uh, Dunstan steals a bunch of jewelry from somebody, and he won't give it to Lord Lord Buckus. And bu- you come to find out, Buckus killed Dunstan's <laughs> oh my god brother. Yeah, and you're like, did. holy shit! This guy's he's a got this monkey murderer. Yeah, he's got this like evil cane with. Uh, it's like got an eagle head on it, but and then it pivots he like wherever his head goes. The bottom and there's like this weird. It looks like it's something you use in a in a shop when you drop bolts underneath your <laughs> you go to, underneath like a, your like uh, toolbox. Yeah, and you pick up loose screws and shit, breaking away. Yeah, my um, three year old actually caught on to Samson being Dunstan's brother. I said, she goes, "Who's that?" I go, "Oh, it's probably his dad." You know, and she yeah. and then later they and she goes, I think it's his brother. And I'm like, yeah, right, kid. And then <laughs> they're like, yeah, it's uh, that was his brother. Or he goes, I remember what happened to your brother, Samson. And I was like, yeah. oh, you were right. And she's like, I told you. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was his dad, too. That was a big monkey. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so we're so supposed to assume that this villain murdered Samson, right? For not following instructions. I, I would imagine yeah. so. He's killed monkeys before. Because he yeah. did, he did say at, at at one point near the end of the movie where he's talking, where he recaptures uh, Dunstan, and he goes, "Pretty soon you're going to join your brother." So I think that means he's gonna fucking like slice him up. <laughs> sure. I um, should have just took the shit when I had the chance. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can we get to the sexiest scene in the movie where an old woman gets massaged by a monkey for a long time? Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Oh that, my god, that's that's, there's the a lot of movie. this movie. Is it's kind of uncomfortable. There's, there's, it's gross. <laughs> let's set the let's set the scene and the mood. So this this go for it. This older older lady While is uh, all spread out naked with a sheet over her on a massage table, and she has who I'm going to call one of the Die Hard One villains massaging her. Yeah, and, oh uh, my god, you're and he's so got right. he, he's going to town, and she's like, oh Hans or whatever, and she's like, Oops, you know, no bullets, she's like, my no husband, <laughs> yeah, my husband's, uh, my husband's not on this trip, so basically we can bang. And he's like, I'll go get the special oil, which sounds like they've done this before. Yeah, so he leaves. Go to get the KY d- jelly. <laughs> yeah. D- the Dun- Dunstan walks in. He goes like, I guess I'll massage this old broad. And he hops up there, and he puts some oil on, and uh, he just proceeds to massage her. At one, and, and she gets real horned up. She's like, <laughs> yeah. oh, God, yes. It and then at one like point. he's fucking her. Oh, for real. Well, if he's, you, spanking if you, her, he's spanking both the ass cheeks and everything. And she's like, don't stop. And then the monkey surfs on her back. Hairy foot. Uh, hairy foot monkey. He's got one one foot on her neck and one on her butt. And he's surfing on her. And she's like, yes, more, more. And I'm like, this is wild stuff. In what world does that feel good? Oh, oh yeah. God. And not so much good, but she's like about to fall off the table. She's so juiced up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, gross. So, so like Lily, oh, out of God. nowhere, Dunstan just like, see ya, and he takes off. Yeah. Dunstan yeah. hit Dunstan hits it and quits it, and then <laughs> that that diehard villain walks back in, and he goes, got that lotion, and she's like, get over it. She grabs him oh, and essentially just goes to town. Oh my so, god! So you know, if it wasn't for Dunstan, those two wouldn't have had such wild, crazy, bang a ring and ding dong. You know, he's a matchmaker. I, oh, it was right. wild. Oh, so that then, was a scene. That was a scene. I was almost like, uh, "Hey, three-year-old daughter, you gotta leave the room. <laughs> this is <laughs> this monkey's this is like to bestiality. Get close, close your eyes. You can't see this." Yeah. <laughs> Also, Dunstan wears shorts through this entire movie, which they're not the ones on the cover, mind you. But he has shorts and a fanny pack, which makes me believe maybe this monkey has a huge dick or, like, balls that were, like, hanging out in the DP. He was like, we can't 
be looking at monkey balls this entire movie. <laughs> uh, I couldn't believe the lack of monkey puns. There were a few, like oh, like on the back. Right. There's more on the back of the box than were in dialogue in the movie. And I'm like, that's so you, true. There should be more monkey puns in here. I know. They hey, said at one point when they're trying to hunt that. him, they go, "We can't let this guy make a monkey out of us." That was like the only one I really remember. That was about it. I would have thought Lord Buckus would have made a ton of monkey jokes. This whole oh, yeah. he would have been better the whole time with the monkey punch. Where he would have sure. said like, "You're not going to make a monkey out of me, Dunstan," or something like that. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dunstan checks out. Yeah, you know? I know. I thought they were going to say that. They didn't. Right before he tries to kill him, he should have said something like that. Yeah. Um, so, there's a lot of great side characters. I love the two old ladies that get hammered during a <laughs> oh business my God, meeting. Yeah. While they're waiting, they just pull out a flask, and they're like, yeah, let's just pour this in our coffee. This movie has a lot of like strange adult themes, that, yeah. so like which makes it like I actually enjoy. I liked watching this movie now. I feel like I would have liked it had I watched it in 1996 at White City Cinema. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but but I, I, like, I did enjoy this. I thought it was going to be kind of like cheesier than, than it. I mean, not that it's not. Well, but sometimes sometimes the 90s movies Like Blank movies Check that didn't quite hold up, but this movie right. fucking holds up, I think. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I thought if this movie was made last year, um, it would have a few lines changed, but that's about it. It's pretty, uh, it's, it, it kind of yeah, holds up have, in terms they'd of. They'd have new laptops maybe, but. <laughs> Jason Alexander wouldn't have had like the old Nokia phone. He would have had a iPhone, you know. Um, but like, I probably like the, like the best, like right at that part with those drunk ladies who were having a meeting with Jason Alexander. Like, this is another one of those. This shock is the best moments. part of the movie. Shock yeah. moment. Me and like, Dane Train were both like, "What? Like, the whoa!" Because <laughs> like, okay, I mean, first of all, you got the you got the dog go like friggin' flying down the down the building. That was like the first big shock moment. This is the other shock moment. This is movies like, I don't know, this movie's like rated PG or G. And the one swear in the movie where Jason Alexander sees Dunstan like hanging from the window from the outside and he stands up and just goes, holy shit. (laughs) (laughs) Let me, let me play it for you now. (laughs) You got it up? Now I, I know that your organization has been to the Four Seasons. I would be loath to ever speak ill of a competitor. But... Holy shit! <laughs> 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 so all right, it was it, it was alarming. Voice too. <laughs> oh, so oh right, I really got to ask you because you're the only parent in the group here, and sure. um, when you watch movies like like with your with your kid, uh, like when something like that happens, I mean, like what do you do? Um, I, I didn't even do anything. She didn't, she knows swear words kind of, but she, she didn't even like flinch at that. You know what I mean? So she didn't turn to me and go like, Oh, did you hear that? And I didn't say anything about it. I just kind of chuckled and went like, Oh, that was interesting. You know, I I just, because like, I remember being like really, really little and I was obsessed with back to the future. I was down the basement watching back to the future and the part where the Libyan showed up and Marty goes, Holy shit. And my grandmother was like coming down the stairs. She's like, Oh, well, you're not going to watch that. And I turned it off. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in a, a lot. I was youngest of five and my parents were, uh, they swore a lot. Like when they got mad. Oh, and okay. uh, so I was around swearing a lot. And if I swore, it really wasn't even that big of a deal. So watching something with swearing was never a big deal. Oh. And to this day, if I like stub my toe, that's the only way I know how to express my anger. And my <laughs> wife will be like, you can't, you can't do that. She's going to think those words are okay to say. And in reality, I, <laughs> I think that they're fine to say, like, yeah. even when you're a kid, sometimes I think it's fine to say it. So, I mean, when I, a monkey I mean, jumps down from a window, <laughs> what else are you gonna perfect. say? Yeah, That's the situation. Yeah. Nothing else, and, unless you said like, "Holy shit, that fucking monkey's out there," you know. <laughs> but I, I, uh, I have no problem with swearing, but I get why she can't just swear in public and how it's not acceptable. So I, yeah. I get both sides of it, but yeah, I'm never gonna be like, she can't watch this because they say shit once. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Oh, and Dane, man. I think you and I think your grandma should be stopped. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, she was the only one who had the had the control on that. I mean, I mean, I remember being like, I don't know, I was, I think I was in first grade, and my folks let me rent uh, Alien. You know what I mean? Because I just wanted. Yeah, to see I wa- it, so. that's the first time I watched an R-rated movie was Aliens in your basement. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and it's all been downhill since. 
So, <laughs> yeah. my my daughter at, at one point she one of my favorite things watching this with her. There was uh, the scene where they they're trying to hide Dunstan, so they check him into the royal suite under yeah. like a, an Asian the, name, like Egyptian. Yeah. And he's so so he gets in this suite and him and the kids just have like a food fight and they play frisbee and all kinds of stuff and she goes this monkey's having a ball <laughs> like like she like she turned to me like can you believe this goddamn monkey he's crazy <laughs> but she said he's having a ball and I thought that was so funny that's uh, hilarious awesome. that monkey's having a ball <laughs> also love the frisbee CGI one million dollar oh, yeah, special God, effect yeah. <laughs> The most random CGI I've ever seen in a movie. They throw a frisbee out the window. It disappears. Is CGI like like it flew off into space, it and then it comes back in that. and hits Glenn Shaddix in the face. <laughs> that is so. Yeah, that has to be the biggest waste of money in any movie <laughs> ever. That must have cost a, oh, a sizable amount. I bet amount. you. I bet you that cost at least twenty or thirty grand back then. <laughs> yeah. Know? Well, like it just. I just love the thing where like it. It comes down, it hits Otho, and he, like, everything goes so awry when he's, like, flailing his arm, like, like shit went everywhere. It wasn't just, like, <laughs> real quick. It's, like, like, shit fucking exploded on his plate. It was crazy. It might as well have just decapitated the dog at that point. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, the thing, oh, too, speaking with that, of, oh, what? I was just going to say, like, so that scene, when they go into, like, the royal suite is, like, I know it's like every single time that we watched like 90s kids movies, every 90s kids movie has to have a really long uh, montage of, of them just like goofing around. It's just like in blank check where it's like the kid just spending money and putting on different clothes. That's and, the entire you know movie. I mean? All of blank check is a montage yeah. of spending yeah. money. Yeah. I mean, like you watch like that, you watch First Kid with Sinbad, like any 90s kids movie that you're going to watch, you're, they're going to have the what I'm going to call the gratuitous uh, 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 '90s have fun montage. You know what I mean? Hey, the monkey was having a ball. Give he, him a break. Yeah, he was at a ball. I can't blame him. You know, <laughs> gotta have the in monkey. Hook, in, 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 a million bananas. <laughs> in Hook, don't it, I would say the moment in Hook is when all the Lost Boys have that like feast and they're all playing yeah. around and partying. Yeah, yeah. There's always something that makes you go like, man, I wish I was there. Yeah, Seriously, exactly. I wish they looked like they were having fun. They were the monkey. They were Dunstan was bowling. They like rolled him down the hallway to <laughs> knock over champagne bottles, yeah. which were very plastic looking, but it still <laughs> looked fun. Camp Nowhere, they do that blob scene where they knock, they they jump on the raft, yeah. or the the inflatable oh, thing, and it yeah. flies you up into the air. Exactly. That was a really fun. Well, that whole movie's fun, but yeah, there's there's always. You're right. The '90s kids fun time montage. It's it's like it's it's a necessity in every single one. You gotta have it. Got to do it. You also got to have a nice character like Buck LaFarge, played by Paul Rubens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. He was my favorite part oh, of Oh, man. He's why I wanted to see this movie in the first place. When I saw Anne, Paul Rubens, in the opening credits, I knew I was in for a real treat. Oh, you didn't know he was in it? No, I had no idea. Oh, I that loved was his... one of the big sellers. This, so... this, was, this was a few years after the whole masturbating in a theater debacle, too, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, this, this was, was probably like one his of his big... first movies. This was his comeback movie. Because that happened in, like, <laughs> I want to say, then like, blow. I, th- <laughs> I want to say that was in, like, 90 or 91 that the whole scandal thing happened. Um, and then so he disappeared for a while. He disappeared. Yeah. Um, it was so weird for me because I, growing up, I mean, me and T-Man, we were fucking bananas Huge Pee-wee for fans. Pee-wee. I mean, absolutely crazy for Pee-wee Herman. And um, when I when I like heard that he was going to be in this movie, I remember being in the theater, unfortunately, without <clears> T-Man, <throat> with some girl. Um, I remember watching this movie and being like, yes, I can't wait for Pee-wee. I remember like halfway through the movie, we're like, where the fuck is Pee-wee? I need my Pee-wee. And he shows up and he's like a completely dif- different character. Didn't do any like, ha, ah! or any of that he stuff. He does have one Pee-wee scream when he falls off the cake or whatever. He goes, ah! Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, like even when I watched like Flight of the Navigator, like, oh, I mean, like, like I knew that was him because he was like, <laughs> like as the, as like the big, uh, you know, the big like chrome almond spaceship. Um, but like, uh, when I watched this, like he was such a completely different character to me. I was like, "This is not, this is not Pee Wee Herman. Like this is he's not Paul so Rubens. good in this. Though. But he's, he's, he's so awesome, good. you know. He's great. He's uh, lived through a, a tortoise the size of a Volkswagen with oh, a tail, <laughs> with a tail. <laughs> like his his character is. I mean, just how he like takes his little like dark gun and just like points it at everything. 
It's funny you say little dart gun because they show it's a tranquilizer gun, but when he shoots it, it's like a sawed off shotgun oh, blast. Dude, right? It, it like, like blows blam. out half of a wall. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. And, it, and he I goes, Are you like, are you nuts? In a George Costanza yeah. voice. <laughs> and I'm like and I'm like, and that that's supposed to just like tranquilize a guy for eight hours? That would like blow their torso in the chunks. Seriously. <laughs> Oh my god! But yeah, he was he was hands down probably one of my favorite parts. It was even like everything he says, he's just like, "How you doing?" Hey, it was just like a guy comes yeah. up to him with like the champagne. And he's like, "Is it free?" And he takes like two of them, and then he oh, goes great. to shoot Dunstan. And before he does, he takes like another big gulp of champagne. Um, I like, hope I want him to get his own movie as this character. Oh, dude, that'd be awesome. He slap he slaps the shit out of Otho like three times. Oh yeah, yeah, for no real reason. Even like when he goes like under tables and he's like looking at like these old broads cooches and he's yeah. like, I'm looking for an orangutan and the guy's like, beat it, you know? And he's and like, he, yeah, he's like, I'm, I'm looking for an orangutan is batangus. And the old man's like, if you look at my wife's orangutan is batangus, I'm going to split you in half <laughs> like this pea soup. <laughs> and like, so he, so instead of just getting up and walking away, He's walking on his knees and just like deep, 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 and he's just like, "How you doing? How you doing?" <laughs> to people, like, it's, and he's got his goofy purple suit. Like, it's just, it's just awesome. You know what I mean? He uh, was the best part, hands down. Absolutely. You know, and I thought that, like, no, he had he he brought in like this dog, like this big dog, I guess, to help him sniff out the monkey. But I was expecting the monkey. I mean, expecting the dog at some point in the movie to like chase the monkey over the tables and like make all the tables go oh, over and like yeah, spilling yeah. food at everybody and turning into like a food fight. That's what I thought was going to happen. But the dog ended up doing shit. He didn't do anything. He dragged. I bet they the, had that written and then that didn't work out for filming. Or uh, something. Ma yeah. Maybe they, yeah. they didn't have the, the budget or something, you know, the, and they replaced it with the dog dragging some old man down. He, a hallway. he drags a bellhop, right? That yeah, was about yeah. it. Um, but uh, this was a good length of a movie. It was only like I think an hour and eighteen minutes. Is that something right? Something like and, that, right? Yeah, yeah. It, and it was like minutes according. It was to the a box. perfect like you you got into the world and then it was uh, over pretty quick and then it's done. You know, I, there yeah, was like there wasn't much padding or anything. Uh, it was the stakes I, aren't very great. high either. No, yeah. I mean, the monkeys at the might end, die. <laughs> At the end, I thought it was weird. Jason Alexander gets fired by the wife, and then like minutes later, the husband's like, "We got a new job for you." And you're like, "What?" <laughs> I thought, isn't that as you know what I mean? Yeah, it it was very strange. I guess well, he hated his wife, and he she cheated on him. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> with, right. With, yeah, with yeah. the monkey and the diehard villain. Yeah. So maybe he wait. Found that was out. his. Was that his wife who was I, getting massaged? I think that was her. Yeah, even though she said my husband's not here, but they're both they're always together and they were there she's the one that runs the hotels or maybe he I don't fucking know. I thought that that lady I thought there was another lady with a white furry hat at the very beginning who checks in with the opera singer and Glenn Shaddix and oh. she's 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 like another rich old lady. Oh, you know what? You might be right. Maybe maybe yeah, she's the one who had her jewels stolen by Dunstan. So Maybe that's you're right. that's right. Maybe that's you're right. right. So, that's probably her. But but at the end, it does seem like the old man who owns the majestic has like a new. He has that other hot young blonde with him. Oh yeah, they yeah don't yeah even yeah. Who he she upgraded is. fast. Like as soon as like, uh, there's like the whole debacle of like the the monkey jumping on the cake and then Otho going on the cake and like they take out the old lady, and then uh, immediately it's like. I don't know, three months later or the same day? I have no idea. I took that as the next day. Like, they had to move out of the hotel the next day, and yeah. uh, and then someone was supposed to come and get Dunstan. Nobody does that. They just get to keep him for whatever reason. And right. then the uh, – I think that, that they could have solved – they could have taken, like you said, because you thought it was the same lady, just have the old lady going, like, I'm staying at this hotel for two days to make sure everything goes okay, you know? And she's got jewels, and she cheats on the husband, so that gives a good reason for her to get like her penance at the end. Yeah. So they could have just eliminated that other lady, yeah. and uh, it would have made more sense. It's very confusing. Could have tightened yep. it up a little bit, but oh well. Um, Other than that, I mean, it's got some like the visual gags in this are great. I think the the guy Lord Butwa did an awesome job as he was like one of I gotta say I was telling Dame we should do like a top ten VHS villains that we've seen I think he would make that list easy absolutely oh yeah 
at least number nine or ten or something. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. I love it. There's, there's this move where he has his cane and then he's like moves his head with the cane. <laughs> it, yeah. He and he like pops into frame at in just strange ways. Like the visual gags are just very good in this. Yeah, absolutely. Oh man, like, I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad you guys made me watch it. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that. We're I was glad like, we we're having Ryan <laughs> on the show, and I kind of feel bad that he has to watch Dunstan checks in. <laughs> It was really a bucket list item of mine. Oh, I know. Well, for it's sure. been a, I think it's been a bucket list item uh, of T Man's for us to like reconcile and yes, kind of it has. bury I'm the glad. banana here on this after all these years, you know? After twenty I'm years. I'm glad I'm glad it's finally over. It's it. It's it's put to rest, dude. I don't have to hold this this monstrous burning animosity for you inside of me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's all it's all over. It's all good. Just like that, just like that week down the Cape, and, and it probably this might is, have this, could have been the summer of '96 for all I know. The, the, it probably was. That was my revenge. I planned yeah, the oh, whole thing. Yeah, maybe it was. <laughs> I. Uh, this really is a milestone in our friendship, if you think about it. It really is. It really is. Yeah, that's I'm so glad weird. to be. I'm glad to be part of it. You guys, glad thank to be part you. of it. Oh, thanks, thank you thanks so much for, for being here, here to partake in this, Ryan. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. so I tell you what. Why don't we? Why don't we do some ratings? And uh, then we'll do our, our own rating real quick. So, T-Man, why don't you do the IMDb? I'll grab the Amazon real quick, okay? Sure. Now, of Ryan. Course, I don't do this in advance. Right. <laughs> and speaking of not doing anything in advance, we didn't talk about this, but Ryan, do you happen to have any trivia on Dunstan Checks In or any monkey movie trivia or anything off the top of your head? I know I'm kind of putting you on the spot. Uh, I have a monkey related question that I just asked the other day. That's not super hard. You want me to ask that one? Sure. Yes. All right. What 1933 movie was remade in 2005 by Peter Jackson? King Kong. King Kong. It was King Kong. Boom. Right. I had to run that down and at I'm, the movie theater I watched. I'm surprised they didn't do some kind of King Kong reference. Although I guess did they did they do a King Kong reference? Was he watching a scary movie yeah, they, at the beginning? Yeah, yeah, yeah they're yeah, like, yeah. there's no monster. He's he called the monkey a monster the first time when he killed the dog. Yeah, um, and then Jason Alexander's like, watch some TV, and then King Kong's on. And the kid's like, ah, that's right <laughs> after it's the mo- kid was trying to take a leak in the bathroom, and Dunstan's shaking him while the kid's like peeing all over the seat. Yeah, yeah like, that stop was it, weird. stop it, I'm taking a leak. You know. Also, their mom is dead. Yeah, they never say why or how, but she's and that's see that's something that's more hard to explain to my kid. She's like, "Hey, where's their?" She's like, "Where's the mom?" And I'm like, yeah. "Ah, she's just not there," you know. Yeah. I'm like, "She's I don't know. She might." And she goes, "Is she dead?" And I'm like, "I think so." I I think Lord Buttwog killed her with yeah. uh, Simon or whatever the other monkey was. I'm like, she fell down a laundry chute, but there happened to be no basket at the bottom. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. On IMDb, there's an alternative cover for Dunstan checks in where he's surfing. On a suitcase, if you guys can see that. <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, I like yeah. it. It's, uh... They photoshopped the old woman's back into a suitcase. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, they said, Steven Spielberg went back and he CGI'd that woman into a suitcase and a walkie-talkie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Dude. I have the rating for IMDb. It's out of 10, right? Yes. All right. Out of 10 stars, Ryan, what do you think the IMDb rating is? 6.9. All right. 6.9 from Ryan Buds. Dane Train. Uh, I usually think IMDb gives lousy ratings to really good 90s kids movies. So I'm going to say it probably gave it like a 4.2. 4.2. It's somewhere in between with a 5.3. Oh, okay. Good guesses. Middle of the road. Middle of the road. Both good guesses. I would have figured it to be higher, quite honestly, because this was a good movie. Yeah. All right, so the Amazon rating of the VHS copy, which you can get right now for seven seventy seven plus shipping. Actually, no, the lowest price you can get it for right now is seventy five cents plus shipping. So that's a well, darn that's good bargain. Definitely worth it. Buy I think it. everybody out there who is a good fan of nineties kids movies should definitely invest in a copy, especially of Dance monkey Jensen. movies, monkey criminal movies. monkey movies, where the monkey is a notorious criminal. Who gets rehabilitated by the end, like monkey business. By, by, <laughs> by kids, right. 
Uh, yeah, or Monkey yeah. Trouble, rather. Monkey Trouble. Yeah, Dunstan still tries to murder Otho with a big, heavy uh, coconut when he smashes it on his head at the end of the movie. Yeah, they definitely set this up for a sequel at the end. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Ryan, what do you say? Out of five stars, what do you think that the general Amazon consumer of this VHS tape gave Dunstan checks in out of five? Do, do they do half stars? Yes, they do. I'm going to say two and a half stars. Ooh, Ooh. that's rough. Ooh, all right, team man, what do you say? Oh, man, I feel, Amazon is nice, and this is a good movie. I'm saying this has, I'm going to say this has five stars. Five stars all across the board. This is a great movie <laughs> for Amazon. Close enough, 4.6, so almost four and Ooh. a half stars out of five. Wow. See, I went too high the first time, too low the second time. Yeah, yeah. people on Amazon seem to really like this movie. So there you go. Does the checks in on Amazon. So now for our own personal rating. So Tima, what do you think out of 10 stars? What should we give it? Oh man. Uh, out one. of 10 stars. Instead of stars, what are we going to change it to? Out of 10. Oh yeah. We got us. Holy shits. <laughs> out of 10. Holy shits. Uh, from, from Jason <laughs> Alexander. Out of 10. Jason Alexander. Holy shits. <laughs> okay. I give it. I give it, um, I'm going to say nine. Holy shit. Whoa. This you... was a good monkey movie. I would rewind it. You know, you would I rewind I would. it. Now, why not? I would. Holy shit. Out of Jason Alexander. I mean, it's not a perfect movie, but it's pretty goddamn close. Ah, okay. I got you. All right, Ryan. How about you? How many? I, I, ten? I would give it seven. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's a great movie, great movie for kids uh, and adults alike, and I think it still works in 2018 if you like uh, some quality monkey business. Would you rewind the tape again? Uh, yes, I would, and if I see this for 50 cents anywhere, I'm buying it. Mm, yeah, all man. Right, worth all right. it. I give... I paid twice as much. <laughs> I give Dunstan checks in 10 out of 10. Holy shit Holy from Jason shit. Alexander. You do 10 out of 10. Wow, wow, wow. I found this. Wow. I found this movie to be a perfect example of a 90s kids movie to a T. I found that uh, there were like no lulls in this movie. There were like no dead spots like where I was where I was like bored by any of these, you know, um, um, notorious montages like in blank check. Um, I loved all the adult humor that was still in it. The movie still really holds up today. Uh, everybody you know was awesome in it. I thought it was. I thought it was just awesome. Ten out, of, ten out of ten. Holy shits from me. Fuck it. I'm upgrading my nine out of ten. Holy shits to ten out of ten. Holy whoa, shits. Whoa, whoa. You're going ten to out of ten the, too. You're, you're going to we the royal. We gotta be in this holy together. Holy shit, sweet. Because we're hotel. burying the banana tonight, and we have to agree that this is a perfect. Kids movie from 1996. Yes, 100%. That's it. Mm, lock it into place. You got it. Hey, That's guys, it. guys, guys, I'm changing my rating. I'm going to six out of ten. Holy shit. Oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Degrading it. <laughs> oh geez, is to that the kind of like make up for ours? You kind of like equate it back to where it was. If we're on I will like, now, like a scaling grade. <laughs> I will now pay no more than one quarter for this movie on VHS. Oh, oh no! no. <laughs> what did we do? I'm checking think, out. You're check, he's checking out. <laughs> oh. oh, geez. Well, I'm sorry oh, to hear that, geez. Ryan. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, we're going to have to ask ask your kid. what they they probably give a 10. Well, we can't oh, say holy she gave shit. It. It's going to be like bananas. No, she said I allow her to say shit, so she gave it 11 holy shit. Oh, hey. wow, crazy. <laughs> well, if anything, the movie's for the kids, so their ratings are really the ones that count, I suppose. That's so, true. That's true. Dunstan wasn't the only one who had a ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this monkey's having a ball. <laughs> I'm gonna awesome. get. I'm gonna. I'm gonna record her saying that, and I'll send it to you guys. Yeah. You can insert it. Oh, please do. <laughs> please awesome. do. Awesome. That monkey's having a ball. Oh All right. man. Alrighty. Thanks so much for having me today, guys. No, oh, thanks thank you for so being much, on. Ryan been a blast all right everybody well this has been the vhs bandits podcast where we watch dunson checks in from 1996 yet another stellar gem of the not of the 90s kids genre so uh, i'm your uh, one of your hosts dane train with me as always is topher hansen and we're over here with our special guest ryan buds all right 
All right, everybody, we're going to check out. So we'll see you guys next time. As always, be kind and rewind. Video stores may be all gone, but Video Rangers Podcast is still open for business. Video Rangers Podcast is a member of Infirmary Media, and you can join us each week as we discuss only the finest rentals. Movies like No Retreat, No Surrender, Teen Wolf 2, Police Academy 4, Citizens on Patrol, The Heavenly Kid, Meatballs Part 2, Cool as Ice, Miami Connection, and a whole bunch of films that'll keep you up all night. Hey kids, remember TV's very special episodes? Well, we got those in stock, so meet us at the bike shop. For more information, search Video Rangers Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.